Salam Perpaduan. You're watching News at 10 with me, Brendan Lepaul. Our top stories tonight. Political stability and harmonious ties among parties reflects a progressive Malaysia. Also, KPDN to engage with four main chicken suppliers to review ceiling crime. UMNO President Datuk Sri Dr. Ahmad Zahid Hamidi said political stability and harmonious ties among parties in the government would reflect a progressive Malaysia. The understanding, he said, will also ensure that the unity government can complete its full term. The Bagandato MP said to ensure continuity of the unity government, the parties in the government had agreed to form a joint secretariat to discuss matters arising from time to time, including political cooperation. Speaking before 2,820 delegates at the 2022 UMNO General Assembly today, the Barisan Nasional BN Chairman said the government had also agreed to form a secretariat to study the manifestos of parties in the unity government. So melalui sekretariat ini di peringkat kerajaan kita mencari titik persefahaman titik persamaan dan rasa kebersamaan bagi menterjemahkan janji-janji yang telah dibuat kepada rakyat paling ketara semua parti menyentuh tentang soal kos sari hidup yang pada dasarnya boleh dilaksanakan Ia merupakan manifestasi bersama ke semua parti dalam kerajaan Perpada. Kita berharap usaha penterjemahan manifestasi ke semua agenda pembelaan rakyat akan dapat dilaksanakan dengan segera. The Deputy Prime Minister added the agreement signed by the coalitions in the unity government would serve as a guide for the parties involved. Sabah and Sarawak have been accorded the status of region and are no longer regarded as states within Malaysia. According to Deputy Prime Minister Datuk Sri Dr. Ahmad Zahid Hamidi, Datuk Sri Ahmad Zahid, who is also the Minister of Rural and Regional Development, said the relocation of the Indonesian capital to East Kalimantan made the Sabah and Sarawak regions more strategic to be developed as new growth areas. UMNO berpendirian Sabah dan Sarawak adalah rakan politik strategik. Dengan itu, apa-apa pun bentuk kerajaan Malaysia pada masa sekarang dan masa rapat, UMNO tetap memilih untuk bersama-sama dengan rakan-rakan politik dari Sabah dan Sarawak demi kestabilan politik Malaysia. Datu Sri Ahmad Zahid, who is also the President of UMNO, said this in his policy speech at the 2022 UMNO General Assembly. Accordingly, the Barisan Nasional BN Chairman said that the Malaysia Agreement 1963, MA63, needs to be implemented immediately. He said that the overflow of development in Kalimantan needs to be worked on immediately so that Sabah and Sarawak will develop more rapidly. Every social media platform providers are recommended to take action if there are activities on the dissemination, promotion and sales of video recorded in the fitting room on their platforms. Deputy Communications and Digital Minister Tioni Ching said, aside from supervision, providers must erase or take down such videos immediately from their platforms. Uh, baru semalam, uh, kami uh, di Kementerian uh, YB Fami, uh, Menteri Komunikasi dan Digital dan saya, um, ada kamu syarat dengan Meta dan juga dengan TikTok. Uh, antara agenda adalah juga bagaimana kita nak meningkatkan lagi perlindungan kita ke, ke, untuk semua pengguna-pengguna di media sosial. Jadi untuk KKD, kami memang akan minta uh, uh, pl uh, penyedia platform ini seperti Facebook, Twitter, TikTok untuk pastikan bahawa kalau ada uh, 
benda sebegini mereka padan ataupun tutup akaun itu dengan uh, seter benda. She added that KKD, through the Malaysian Communications and Multimedia Commission, MCMC, and Cyber Security Malaysia, are ready to work together with the police if they need any technical assistance or forensic analysis to facilitate investigations. Recently, it was reported that a video footage captured by hidden camera in a fitting room at a popular clothing store in Kuala Lumpur went viral. It was learned the video was sold online to the public and promoted widely on social media accounts. The Domestic Trade and Cost of Living Ministry, KBDN, will hold an engagement session with the four main players in the chicken supply chain to review the current ceiling price of 9 ringgit and 40 cent for standard chicken. Its minister, Datso Suri Salahuddin Ayub, said the government is committed to bring down the ceiling price for processed chicken as the supply is now stable. Ada empat syarikat besar uh, yang akan saya umumkan nanti. Saya akan meneruskan engagement ini direct kepada mereka. Jadi pada upstream, pada punca dari mana masalah ini berlaku. Jadi tunggu dulu biar saya mendapat fakta-fakta uh, yang lebih lengkap daripada Kementerian, daripada Kementerian MAFS, daripada Kementerian Ekonomi, daripada MITI supaya data-data itu bila kita jumpa nanti dengan empat pemain utama ini saya harap kita dapat berunding dengan baik dan kita cuba mencari satu penyelesaian supaya rantaian nilai itu rantaian nilai itu keseluruhannya dapat kita perbaiki dan ini akan memberikan manfaat kepada rakyat untuk mendapat harga yang lebih stabil he, however, did not give any specific time frame for the ceiling price review, but hoped that it could be implemented as soon as possible. Datuk Sri Salahuddin also expressed his appreciation to the main hypermarket chains in the country, which have started selling processed chicken at below the ceiling price. He was met during a visit at the Ayam Bismi Sales Center in Simpang Empat, Kangkong, in Alostar, Kedah, today. to expedite 17 six school projects progress by end of 2023 stay tuned but first under president Dr. Sri Dr. Ahmad Zahid is leaving it to delegates to decide whether the two top posts in the party should be contested in the coming UMNO election which must be held by 19 May this year elaborating further Dr. Sri Ahmad Zahid said various views had been expressed on the election for the posts of president and deputy president but he was confident that UMNO delegates were mature enough to assess the situation in line with the democratic process practice in the country. Ada yang mahu kedua-dua jawatan itu tidak bertandingkan. Tidak kurang juga yang mahu ia dipertandingkan. Sebagai seorang yang yakin kepada proses demokrasi, saya menyerahkan kepada perwakilan untuk menentukannya. Namun saya yakin para perwakilan dan ahli-ahli UMNO di Ekar Umbi boleh menilai yang mana kaca, yang mana permata. He said this when delivering his presidential address at the 2022 UMNO General Assembly in Kuala Lumpur today. That was Sri Ahmad Zahid, who is also Deputy Prime Minister and Rural and Regional Development Minister, had been reported as saying that he was open to a challenge from anyone eyeing the President's post. He said this would give an opportunity for the estimated 160,000 delegates to choose the party leadership, especially the President and Deputy President. The Transport Ministry will come up with a better maintenance system for the mass rapid transit MRT trains by the third quarter of 2023. Commenting further on the matter, its minister, Anthony Locke, admitted that the people are disappointed over the issue and the ministry is very committed to ensure trains are in tip-top condition and at the same time will continue to monitor the culture of train maintenance randomly in the country to overcome the problem of frequent operation disruptions. Ya, masalah malam ada gangguan uh, dalam uh, MRT Kajang Main uh, Memang 
memang saya telah minta uh, pihak pengurusan untuk membuat uh, penjelasan berkenaan apa yang berlaku. Itu memang masalah teknikal seperti yang berlaku uh, sebelum ini. Ini untuk MRT Line. Yang sepatutnya MRT Line ini lebih uh, lebih baru. Baru hanya berkhidmat dalam uh, 5 hingga 6 tahun sepatutnya uh, uh, perkhidmatan yang lebih baru. Tetapi ada sedikit masalah teknikal yang memang uh, pihak pengurusan sedang. The management needed six to eight months to implement train maintenance for the train, while the full maintenance will be completed in the third quarter of this year. Yesterday, the Kajang MRT line was disrupted after a train experienced low air pressure at Pasa Seni Station, which caused hundreds of commuters to be stranded. Twelve RFID lanes will be added to North-South Expressway by mid-April this year. The decision to add more lanes was made following complaints made by highway users on the lack of RFID lanes, which caused congestion. Works Minister Dato Sri Alexander Nantalingi said safety issues were also raised where road users questioned the position of the RFID line in the changing toll booth which had caused accidents. He said the decision was reached at a meeting between him and representatives from Touch and Go Malaysia, Malaysian Highway Authority and Plus Malaysia this morning to obtain information on the matter. Saya difahamkan oleh LLM dan uh, pihak yang uh, berkenaan yang lain ada 12 huh? 12 tempat tol nanti uh, dalam masa uh, mungkin sebelum bulan April lah uh, <coughs> sebab memerlukan masa sedikit untuk membuat kerja-kerja <coughs> supaya lorong RFID ini di 12 lokasi ini boleh kita laksanakan. Sebut 12 lokasi itu ya di Sungai Besi, Plaza Tol Masuk, dan Jalan Duta, Plaza Tol Masuk, Shah Alam, Plaza Tol Masuk, Sungai Buloh, Plaza Tol Masuk, Rawang Selatan, Plaza Tol Masuk, dan Setia Alam, Plaza Tol Keluar, ya Setia Alam, Plaza Tol Masuk. Jadi Putra Mahkota Plaza Tol Masuk, Kajang Plaza Tol Masuk dan Jembatan Pulau Pinang ya. dan juga uh, di Lebuh Raya Butterworth Kulim di Kubang Semang. The Education Ministry, KPM, is aiming to expedite the progress of 17 six school projects by the end of this year. Its Minister, Fadlina Sidek, said the KPM will ensure that these school projects will be taken out from sick projects status. Saya rasa yang sekarang ini yang sedang betul-betul kita lihat uh, yang betul-betul um, dalam perhatian kita ada 17 semuanya termasuk Sabah Sarawak. Ya? Uh, jadi kita sedang lihat dan nak pastikan uh, 17 ini uh, disegerakan mengikut uh, tempoh masa uh, supaya kita boleh um, pindahkan status itu daripada uh, sakit uh, kepada ritanda. Jadi maknanya dia akan bergerak mengikut uh, yang sepatutnya dan dapat disiapkan dengan segera. She added that among the factors that caused the delay in these projects was lack of labour force and the Ministry is currently undertaking numerous intervention steps to expedite the progress of the projects. She said this after a working visit to Sekolah Kebangsaan SK Keledang Jaya Changkat in Nibong Tebal earlier today. A director of a rubber manufacturing company pleaded not guilty at the Kuala Lumpur session scored today to four counts of submitting false documents to grant Totten Malaysia PLT over a non-existent sale of used machines totaling nearly three million ringgit two years ago. Wong Ping Kiong, 60, the director for Goodway Rubber Industries, Sindiran Berhad, pleaded not guilty to all the charges which were read out before Judge Susanna Hussein. According to the first charge, the woman allegedly submitted the GIIB rubber debit note document amounting to 2.95 million ringgit to grant Fort and Malaysia's audit manager, Tam Siu Ping, containing false information regarding the sale of six units of used machines that did not take place which was intended to deceive the company. 
For the second to fourth charges, Wong is accused of the same offence involving another document containing the permission granted to Goodway Rubber Industries Sindiram Berhad for the disposal of the same used machines that did not take place. At the same court, another director of the company, Tai Bun Wee, 63, pleaded not guilty to three charges of colluding with Wong to commit the offence at the same location and date. Wong and Tai were allowed bail of 60,000 ringgit and 50,000 ringgit with one surety each in order to surrender their passports as well as report to the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission, MACC, office once a month. The court also fixed 28th of February for mention. Prime Minister Dato Sri Anwar Ibrahim today spent his time to meet and greet with Negeri Sembilan folks in conjunction with his first visit to the state since his appointment as the Prime Minister November last year. Dato Sri Anwar also took the time to quench his thirst at the Chendol Songko Tinggi store in Kampung Jiboy Baru in Sremban. Aside from chendol, the Prime Minister also tried several other delicacies available including Mi Rebus Johor, Laksa Johor and Jemput Jemput. In the meantime, store owner Ahmad Dani said he was informed several days beforehand about the Prime Minister's visit. According to him, he was excited about the visit but at the same time found it hard to believe that the Malaysian Prime Minister was coming to visit his store. Berbau perasaan juga sebenarnya agak-agak terkejut sebab apa kami ada masa yang agak pendek untuk melakukan persiapan dan juga uh, kami rasa amat berbahasa hati sekerana beliau sanggup datang uh, ke Channel Sokok Tinggi Seremban. Kami harap dia meneruskan uh, uh, usaha-usaha untuk membangunkan Malaysia lah secara keseluruhannya dengan lebih kesan lagi kan kita pun selepas pasca covid ni kita tahulah satu dunia pun terkesan dengan covid kan jadi kita amat berharap dia dapat uh, membantu semua apa mendengar keluhan-keluhan rakyat dan juga seterusnya uh, membangunkan ekonomi negara kita secara keseluruhan Chendol Songko Tinggi store has been operating since November 2017 and the store is unique as the staff are wearing Songko Tinggi along with Baju Melayu or checkered shirts with a name tag on. Datu Sri Anwar afterwards performed the Friday prayers at Masjid Dato Klana Petra Lela Muhammad Yusof in Sikamat accompanied by Negeri Sembilan Menteri Besar Datu Sri Aminuddin Harun. Russia and Ukraine discuss humanitarian issues at closed door meeting. Stay with us. The Thai military killed five suspected drug traffickers in a jungle shootout in Thailand's north, the third such deadly clash in two months. Officials told the media today that the incident happened in the early hours on, on Thursday morning in Chiang Rai province, which is near the infamous Golden Triangle border region between Thailand, Laos and Myanmar, a lucrative hub for the illegal drug trade. The military said a patrol encountered a group of five suspected smugglers with backpacks who refused to be searched and then started shooting with an unknown weapon. Prem Chai Prem Kamal, an officer with Pamung Task Force, told AFP that narcotics have been very prevalent at the border, but recently there has been an order from the commander to step up law enforcement efforts. The clash lasted five minutes and no soldiers were injured. The task force said in a statement and close to 500,000 methamphetamine peels and a gun were found in the group's possession. The shootout followed two similar incidents, the killing of six alleged drug smugglers earlier this week and an altercation in December involving 15 deaths. Southeast Asia is awash with meth and authorities netted a record billion pills across the Asian region in 2021, according to a United United Nations report. Neighboring Myanmar has been in chaos and its economy crippled since a military coup in February 2021. But synthetic drug production in troubled Shan state was already booming before the putsch. 
Russian and Ukrainian commissioners held talks on the humanitarian issues on the sidelines of an international ombudsman conference in Turkey's capital, Ankara. This is the third meeting between the two sides on the sidelines of the conference. Two meetings have been held on Tuesday evening and Wednesday noon, where Turkey's chief ombudsman and other officials also attended the meeting. Tatiana Moskalkova, Russia's human rights commissioner, said both sides exchange lists of civilians who want to go back to their countries at this meeting in Ankara. He said it is important that this is a human rights issue and should not be politicized or double label so that it can be resolved effectively and correctly. Dimitro Lubinets, Ukrainian parliament ombudsman for human rights, meanwhile said everybody heard the new initiative from the president of Turkey about the new idea on humanitarian corridors and he believes the new platform can do better for the procedure of the exchange of prisoners. An official at the Ukrainian embassy in Turkey said the talks lasted about four hours, but the official did not say if any tangible progress was made. According to Turkish media, all sides expressed their views on the ceasefire during the meeting. Turkey's chief ombudsman, Seref Malkoc, on Wednesday said the country held talks with Russian and Ukrainian human rights commissioners, hoping to establish a roadmap on children's rights, human rights and the exchange of prisoners, and open a humanitarian corridor. Kazakhstan's parliament today repealed the law that gave former President Norsultan Nazarbayev's immediate family immunity from prosecution and took away his status as the leader of the nation. Nazarbayev, 82, ran the oil-rich Central Asian nation between 1989 and 2019 and created a personality cult during his three decades at the helm. He initially retained sweeping powers when he resigned and nominated close ally Kasim Joma Tokayev as a successor. But the two politicians appeared to fall out early in 2020 amid violent protests across the former Soviet Republic, which Tokayev said were part of an attempted coup. Tokayev then took over Nazarbayev's position as the head of the powerful Security Council and oversaw the sacking of a number of Nazarbayev's relatives and affiliates from senior positions in the public sector. Some of them, such as Nazarbayev's nephew, Kairat Satibaldi, have been detained and charged with embezzling funds from the state or state-controlled companies. The ex-president's closest relatives, however, have until now enjoyed legal immunity, thanks to a law which also gave him the title of Yelbasi or national leader and provide him with an allowance and security detail at the expense of the state. Citing political transformation launched by Tokayev and backed by last year's constitutional reform, lawmakers voted to repeal the law, a move which will allow the state, for example, to freeze the assets of Nazarbayev's family members if they are suspected of a crime. National sprinter Anita Ali dies. There are more in our sports segment. Former national women's sprinter Anita Ali died at the University of Malaya Medical Center, PPUM, here at the age of 59 yesterday. The news of the passing of the athlete who had competed in the SEA Games in the 80s was shared by the National Athletes Welfare Foundation Yakib Chairman Dr. Nurul Arifin Abdul Majid when contacted by the media. Commencing further, Dr. Nurul Arifin said the deceased died at about 7.15 p.m. yesterday due to breast cancer she had previously, which spread to the liver and spine. He said last December the deceased was admitted to the University Malaya Medical Center, PPUM, and Yakib took her to a private hospital for a positron emission tomography scan. 
where it was found that her cancer was worsening. He also said that she fought hard against cancer, but she died yesterday on her birthday. Dr. Nurul Arifin said the demise of Anita, who had participated in the 1990 Asian Games in China, was a great loss to the country's sports arena. He said Anita, who was a Yakit member, gave a lot of advice to the young athletes to continue making the country proud. In the 1989 Sea Games in Kuala Lumpur, Anita, who was 21 at the time, broke the national record for the 4 times 100 meters relay in 45.37 seconds with a partner, G. Shanti, Sajara Toldu Hamza and Dato Mumtaz Jaffa. And on to football, Kelantan FC has signed former South Korean national player Choi Munsik as head coach. The Super League club in a statement today informed that the 52-year-old signed the contract yesterday to guide the team next season. Shunganu said Choi Munsing has extensive experience in football, especially in the Asian continent, in addition to having played at the World Cup stage in the 90s. The Korean has also coached several South Korean football clubs. The statement added that among the highlights of his coaching career was winning the Incheon Asian Games and the Thailand Kings Cup as an assistant coach with the South Korean under-23 national team. Choi Munsing will be assisted by Kelantan FC's coach for last season, Reza Zambari Yahya. Meanwhile, in Tringanu, Tringanu FC TFC head coach Tomislav Steinbrugner said the club will head to Thailand early next month for a warm up session before the Super League kicks off on 24th February. He said four matches were in the works to test the team's performance ahead of the Malaysia League, M League, and the Asian Confederation Cup AFC this season. The Croatian born coach said it included a fixture against a club from Denmark and Chonburi FC. Apart from Thailand, he said several friendly matches were also lined up this month against local teams, including Negri Sambilan FC, NSFC, Kuala Lumpur City FC, KL City FC, and the KL City FC Under-23 squad. The coach noted that these games have been arranged at home because it is a new environment for the new players, especially Ivan Mahmud, Sador Mulkatov, and Dolmigoy Pusic. The Continental Class Cycling Team, Tranganu Polygon Cycling Team, TSG, is betting on five new riders to face a more challenging season this year. Joining them are two important riders, Jesse Abbott of Australia and Ayman Chahyadi of Indonesia, who specialise in mountain climbing techniques. Among the local riders, the new faces are talented athletes from Trangano State Sports Council, MSNT, Malaysia Games, Sukma Program, namely Zuladri Amin Zulkanain, Muhammad Shahme Ayman Abdul Halim, and Ki Sir E. TSG Chief Executive Officer Cheku Muhammad Ismudin Cheku Mahmud said the five riders replace Goh Chun Wat, Jamal Hibatullah, Afik Husni Otman, and Zamri Saleh, who have been appointed as TSG Academy coaches. Cheku Muhammad Ismudin said, apart from the five new races, TSG's elite team is still maintaining the services of 11 riders. Meanwhile, Cheku Muhammad Ismudin said, TSG achieved outstanding results by defending the International Cycling Union, UCI, Asian tour 2022 title with 118 podium finishes and 1,453 points. According to him, the success has enabled TSG to secure 11 million ringgit sponsorship this year from both local and overseas companies such as from Japan, Singapore, Taiwan and Indonesia. He added that the support from sponsors will enable TSG to make more plans to achieve the goal of becoming the top continental team, which it won in 2019. That's it from us. A reminder of our top story, political stability and harmonious ties among parties reflects a progressive Malaysia. Till then, I'm Brendan LePaul. Thank you for watching. Take care.